episode 52 of the Knitting Nurse Podcast. My name is Jasmine and I'll be your host today. Um, today is Thursday, May 26th. <laughs> uh, my friend Jesse's birthday was yesterday, Wednesday the 25th. So happy belated birthday, Jesse, again. I think I wished her happy birthday like a million times. <laughs> but um, that means I do have a few uh, new cast on. I have one new cast on. Um, a couple new starts for uh, with cross stitch. So this is probably going to be a long video and I have um, I have some things to say <laughs> in light of recent events. So I feel kind of funny talking about it and then kind of going into like being all bubbly and happy <laughs> with um, with my knitting. So I'll probably talk about it towards the end um, with like, you know, life updates and things like that. So um, and I do have notes. I took notes for this podcast. I'm trying to start uh, preparing a little bit more so I don't forget so much. So um, I don't have any new, I don't have any FOs. I have one new cast on and I have three um, rolling whips to show. So first I'm going to show the socks that I work on at work. My traveling socks. Uh, I will have to... Do a little bit of surgery oh, on this bag. That's okay. Basically, you just have to like cut some of the frayed edges. But I am working on I have a pair of socks going at all times. Uh, as like my traveling socks that I keep in my purse. And I think I got a lot done this past week. Um, this weekend. So here is the sock. Uh, this right here, this, um, popsicle stitch marker is where I was at last week, last time you saw, and then I did, uh, about 35 rounds in a weekend. I think I did most of this in like a one or two nights. Um, but I'm happy. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So like 50, 54, 55 rounds of the leg out of 80 that I have planned. Um, and then I'm going to do 15 rounds for the cuff. I'll probably do a regular one by one rib because that's a little bit faster. But I'm really liking these. These are like kind of micro striping in like a pastel um, candy cane kind of kind of look. So I might wear these closer to Christmas time. But the, in the skein, it does not look very Christmassy at all. So this is the, uh, the skein, what it's looking like. Um, this is, let's see, <laughs> I know exactly what this yarn is. I don't know why I have to think about it so hard, but, uh, this yarn is from the Fiber Fox, uh, from her Pokemon collection. Oopsies. Pretty sure she still has, uh, some of these yarns in stock. Uh, like ready to ship. Um, so this is the merino sock base, super seventy five percent, seventy five twenty five, super wash merino nylon blend. Uh, in the color Jellicent. And I love I love this color. I want to use it um some more. And. I'm trying to use up a little more of my sock yarn, so I changed my sock recipe a little bit. Basically, because my gauge has loosened a little, um, I am knitting fewer rounds for the foot and therefore more rounds for the leg. I used to do 75 rounds for the foot and then 60 in stockinette for the leg, but now I only have to do like 65 to 70 rounds for the foot and then I'm doing 80 rounds for the leg and then 15 for the cuff because I don't like ribbing. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that I'll use up just a little bit more yarn so I don't have so much left over when I'm finished with one pair of socks. Because when I 
knit socks normally, uh, like the last few pairs I've knit, I've had more than 50 grams left. Um, and I have not used contrasting heels, toes, or cuffs. Uh, it's just the ones gain all the way through both socks. And I buy an entire skein and I want to use it because the colors are beautiful. So I'm hoping, like even when I knit a yarn cozy, I'd have to knit like two or three in order to use up the rest of the yarn. And one person can only have so many yarn cozies. So I thought about like, you know, after I put them into my scrappy blanket, I could wind off 20 grams and just collect them. So I could have enough one day to be able to do an advent swap with one of my friends. Um, if I really wanted to, I could go back and like look through my other sock yarns and just wind off 20 grams to put in like the, because I keep the reusable advent uh, sacks, sacks, the little bags that came with my advents last year. Um, I've kept those because I really want to do advent swaps. I think they're really fun. Just like scrappy advent swaps with friends, with other knitters um, that I've made over the last year but I don't have enough. I don't know if I'll have enough um, by this Christmas, but definitely next Christmas I will. But then like, there's only 20 grams. I don't have 30 grams left. Like, I don't know what to do with it. So I need to find um, projects where I can use like a little bit of one color and then have a main color going throughout. So like a color work sweater, mayhaps. Um, and I do have a few planned with some of the solid colored sock yarns I have up here. So I'm hoping that that'll work out. But, you know, those plans are still a work in progress. Okay, next whip <laughs> um, is my Radiate sweater. The designer is Hohi Locatelli. This is probably the last time you'll see this for a little bit, at least until July. Um, but the, de the designer of this sweater is Hohi Locatelli. I am knitting the I think it's like 42 or 44 inch size so it's a little bit more like fitted than I probably would normally pick now but I do really like how it's turning out so I finished the yoke um two weeks ago uh you saw the finished yoke and the separated sleeves in the last podcast and I started knitting the body so this is the front. So I do have a little bit of the body knit. Uh, let me see where my stitch marker is. Here. So I only knit like an inch <laughs> of the body um, since the last time you saw this because, I don't know, I haven't been watching anything too, too compelling. I've mainly been watching Twitch. And when I watch other people craft, I don't need to pay super close attention. So I take that opportunity to work on... Um, projects that I have to actually look at every so often. So this is kind of boring knitting that is on the back burner a little bit. I did place these stitch markers here on the um on either side where it called for because there is waist shaping in this but I am not doing any waist shaping on my sweater because I have a boxy waist. Um like my ribs going down to my hips is the same. So waist shaping does not work on me. It kind of just makes me look like a sausage. Um, so I don't do waist shaping. I would prefer to just do some A-line shaping when I get towards the bottom, which is why I've kept these. So I have to, you know, try it on and do a little bit of math once I get maybe halfway down the body uh, to figure out where and where and how much I need to start doing my A-line shaping. And I still have all my yarns in here. So my contrast color that I used for the, it's like a two color ribbed yoke. Uh, so the contrast color that I used is this. It is from Dye Lots Studio. Um, it is in her Moonstone Light DK Base, 100% Superwash Merino. Uh, it's an eight-ply cabled construction, so it's very round. And um, I, haven't, I didn't have any issues with, like, splitting or uh, the plies kind of breaking or anything like that or separating. 
which I really like. And the color is in, is from her uh, moon, Moonstone, Birthstone collection. This is July, which is Ruby. This was my favorite of her Moonstone collection. I am probably going to buy my own. Did I, why do I keep saying Moonstone? This is my favorite from her Birthstone collection, my favorite color, um, because it's like bright pink and I thought this would be, her, be perfect for the Radiate sweater. I do plan on buying my own birthstone, which is uh, topaz. I think it's a, uh, it's like something, it's like the other name for like the, like the topaz, um, but is what she calls hers. But I do want to buy it and make a pair of socks for myself. But my sister is September and I, it's like, it's sapphire, which is this beautiful blue speckle, which I want to, and I want to make my sister a pair of socks as well. I do need to make her more socks and some like purple socks specifically. Favorite color is purple. So I really need to make my sister more things because she actually appreciates the things that I make for her. Um, so my main color, uh, which is what I'm using all by itself because I'm technically done with the contrast color, but I have so much left over. So I'm going to use it for the ribbing. I might do a two color rib for the um, cuffs of the sleeves to kind of add a little bit of spice to that. Uh, so the main color is Barocco Ultra Wool DK, 100% superwash wool. I It was really important to me that both of my colors were superwash yarns. Um, the color is 83108. And it's this beautiful like heathered um, kind of cool gray. And I love it. I love this color. I really want to like make other things out of it. I did not realize how nice Barocco is. Um, I bought the Barocco yarn from Webb's Yarn Store, which is like basically my local yarn store because I don't really have one that's like big. Most of the LYSs near me are very, are smaller, uh, more local indie dyers. And I don't always need like you know, sometimes I just need like a cheap, solid or heathered yarn to knit the body of a sweater. You know, I'm not on as much of a budget as I used to be, but I don't, I also don't like wasting my money. <laughs> and I, I don't always love buying like solid hand dyed yarns, especially in like sweater quantities. If I'm buying a solid yarn in a sweater quantity, it's just going to be like a commercially dyed yarn. Because I don't have to alternate my skeins throughout the entire sweater. And it's cheaper. Meaning I can make more sweaters. <laughs> okay. Next, speaking of sweaters. This sweater is the Long Summer Cardigan. And I need to talk about this cardigan. So I made some decisions this past week. And when I hold this up, it is not going to be a long cardigan it's a standard length cardigan as you can see um I ripped out a lot of this cardigan because I had like three re two repeats left um to knit like for the, through the rest of May so a repeat is this much um knitting and I had two more left last time you saw me and it was hitting kind of like just above my like pop little, uh, like behind my knees, <laughs> just above like my, my knee pit <laughs> basically. So, uh, and two more repeats would have brought it like halfway down my calves, which is basically a duster. And I would like, I'd love to knit myself a duster, but I want like a, a lacy duster made out of like wool yarn something a little more breathable and you know something that's like you know has like some lace motifs just like a different look this is not the kind of look I want for a duster this is more of a, a cardigan a long cardigan but the way that I wanted the my fade to play out would not have worked to have it hit like just behind my knees so I picked up the stitches just at the end of this repeat which is the white and um I ripped out 
like all the sweater that I had knit over the last couple of weeks and I did the ribbing and I bound off. And this is what we have. So this is where I'm at for this sweater. It's basically a, it's a sleeveless, button bandless <laughs> cardigan. The body is done, which I am happy. Um, I can check that off of my whip go box <laughs> technically because I because I just I made decisions and I changed what I was going to do with this um the main color of this sweater this is like I just wrapped it around the yarn cozy but I did not realize it was going to be this much yarn so it looks real funny but <laughs> this um is actually since it's not it's already bound off and not attached I could just unwind it and re I could just rewind this into a proper cake but this yarn that I'm using is the main color this is the loops and threads um wool like yarn from Michaels and it is a light fingering weight 100% acrylic yarn it's very soft oh my god <laughs> I love this yarn if I have to knit anything for someone, I'll probably use the the Loops and Threads acrylic yarn because they are like, the even their other weights are just so soft. They're so vibrant and I need more. <laughs> I need more. for Like this acrylic yarn, I think are just perfect for gifts, um, especially for non-knitters who do not know how to take care of wool <laughs> uh and I don't really love knitting with cotton because it doesn't have that same like stretch and bounce that wool does so my stitches are don't really look the same but acrylic um kind of has that stretch especially if it if it's blended with some nylon um acrylic has that has a lot of the same qualities and I can get the same stitch definition and evenness as I can with wool as I'm knitting so I do really like knitting with acrylic. I'm one of the few, <laughs> it feels like. But um, wool like loops and thread, uh, loops and threads, wool like yarn, light fingering weight. The color is cool gray. And then for the contrast colors, the um, I'm use the like uh, contrasting garter ridges. I'm using a fade set that I got from Hobie in their uh, fingering weight rainbow cotton. The rainbow cotton is so soft <laughs> and um basically it's just like a fade of five blues and then white at the very bottom and when I knit the sleeves because I am five foot two five foot three two five two and a half I say I'm five three I'm like five two and a half but when I pick up this, when I knit the sleeves, I'm going to get down to like here before I'll have to do the ribbing. Uh, so I won't use the white ever again. And I won't use this dark blue again either. So I could put those away and I'll probably save them for like dishcloths, hand towels, whatever. Or I could use them for like um, baby clothes. Like I could knit some more, um, what's it called? Vertebrae, vertebrae cardigans because <clears throat> I'm getting to the age now I'm 24 I'm getting to the age now where my friends are starting to have babies on purpose <laughs> so I have to make them gifts <laughs> for their babies that they're having with their partners and <sighs> yeah I it's a it's a shock I'm still it, it's kind of a shock but anyways um so I'm going to use these four colors in the sleeve in the sleeves um because the way that Hohe does this like they're short rows up at the top and the shoulder where that makes it so that you bypass lining up this stripe which is very nice so I'm excited but first I'm before I even get to the sleeves I'm going to do the button band because that is the part that I'm looking forward to the least I don't like knitting ribbing and I only have one set of US 3 needles, which is what it's called for. They tell you to use, uh, she tells you to use your smaller needles for all the, all the edge ribbing. So the, the cuffs and the button band are used, 
are knit using the smaller needles. And I only have one set of those needles. I don't know if they're long enough, but I'm going to have to make it work. And it's just a lot of ribbing that I don't want to do. So I'm going to do the button band and the sleeves. Um, not next month because I have other projects planned for next month, uh, which I will get to. I did cast on something new that I'm going to focus on to try and finish next month. Um, I have two other projects I want to finish next month, so we'll see. Um, but yes, the long summer cardigan and the radiate sweater will come out in July and I will try to finish both of those in July. Shouldn't be too hard. She said with, with confidence. <laughs> so, um, next, the next project that I worked on this week is a new cast on. And it is another sea glass tea. Uh, I think I talked about starting this last week, but I ended up casting on a sea glass tea. I'm trying to hold it back so I, like I can see what it looks like. Uh, these like lines here, these little dots are where the increases were, but I did change how I do the increases because these yarns contrast so much. So I cast this on for my friend Jessie's birthday. Uh, Jessie is Miss Lead Pages here on YouTube. She also owns a cross stitch business where she sells um, her own hand dyed fabric. She sells cross stitch charts. She sells flosses. You know, she's basically like a, you know, an online needle workshop and you should go check her out. She is at mislaypages.com. <laughs> I'll try to remember to put her link in my description, but her favorite color is rainbow. So I am knitting the sea glass tee uh, using the rainbow, the neon rainbow. This is not all of them. This is only half the yarns. Uh, but I'm using the neon rainbow, um, fade that I got from Malia made it for her like, uh, January countdown at the beginning of this year. And I just started this, um, this sea glass. So I'm very excited. I started out doing the called for um, KFB increases, but then I noticed that because of my color dominance, uh, they're very prominent. And I mean, I wasn't going to rip it back and start over. Like, that's not happening. So instead, my friend Zach told me that I should try knitting below, try doing a lifted increase. And that's what I did. And it looks way more seamless. You can still kind of tell the increase if you look hard enough, but like you can barely tell. So I'm on the third color. You might not be able to really tell in on camera. It's easier to tell in person. Um, but I'm on the third color here, which is like the third pink. And then I'm going to start getting into, um, there's like one more coral, this color, and then I'll get into the oranges and yellows and greens and then blues and purples and then I'll be done and it's gonna look so good and I am knitting this into an actual tee um I'll like split for the sleeves and then when I when I'm done with the body I'll just pick up and knit the the cuffs of the sleeves and then I'll be finished so that is exciting I am knitting it in a bit of a bigger size I am knitting the 50, but I think I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll just rip it out and size down because I think the, I have like a 40, 41 inch bust and it says that the recommended ease is eight inches. I figure nine inches wouldn't be too terrible, but I want to make sure I have enough yarn to like knit even stripes. So maybe I'll rip it out and start over. I might have to, I don't know. I might have to go back down a size to, because my scrappy sea glass is in the 46, um, which is like, you know, within the recommended ease and it's still, you know, a good amount bigger than my bus. It's still going to be nice and like loose, <laughs> not too fitted, not too tight. So I don't know. I might have to rip it out and start over in the smaller size. 
because I got 10 gram minis and I'm using them first in I'm using the first in these socks these neon rainbow socks that's what I bought them for but I had so much left over I didn't know what to do with them and then woolen pine came out with the sea glass I was like oh that would be perfect to pair it with black yarn running all the way through so but they're only 10 gram minis if I had if I could go back I would just buy 20 gram minis and I'd be safe to knit at the bigger size but I might have to rip it out and knit the smaller size because I might not have enough because after I knit five stripes each on the two socks um I'm knitting these socks in tandem by the way so this is the, the sock that's further behind I did finish the heels um but once I I knit five stripes in each color on the socks so they'll be a little bit taller than my typical typical sock length but that's fine but they're only 10 gram minis I use about three grams for both socks uh two to three grams for both socks so I have seven to eight grams left for the sweater which is plenty if you add it up but I want to make sure I have enough especially when I get down to like the wider part of the yoke right before splitting for the sleeves I don't know how much I'm going to really have left so we'll see we'll see I'll 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 sleep on it a little bit <clears throat> after I'm done recording this so we are at the end of May it's the last week of May so um lipco numbers have not been called quite yet i think they're they will be called it tomorrow but i do know what i'm going to be focusing on next month for june so my june plans are to finish the neon rainbow sea glass um and i also want to finish the neon rainbow socks and i want to finish freaking i need to finally finish my bismuth shawl which is this um the pattern that I'm using for this is the festival of stitches pattern and I'm knitting it in uh by pride colors and I love this so this is gonna be my project for June because June is pride month and even though pride is all year long um I would like to you know focus on pride stuff next month so I did a good amount right now I am kind of stuck <laughs> on the cable section here because I don't like joint cables I don't like cables at all especially cables where I have to purl but it looks it looks so good it looks amazing but I don't like doing cables and then on the other side, I think the cable color is going to be, is going to be the pink. And then on the side, it's the blue. And then at the very, and then, um, at the very end, I think it's just ribbing is what I'll do in the purple. I think, uh, there, I think there might be more lace and then the ribbing. I don't remember, but I love this. I call it my bismuth shawl because... Um, it's like a little like play on word. It's like a little play on word kind of thing. Um, the, uh, bismuth is an element and the symbol on the periodic table for bismuth is by. So <laughs> I'm hilarious. I know. Ha ha. Laugh it up. <laughs> um, but I, I plan on finishing three projects next month. And it's kind of a lot, but I think I can do it because I do have a weekend off. I'm taking a weekend off for my dad's birthday next month. Um, uh, for those of you that might not know, my dad died in 2018 um, and his birthday is on June 11th. So... I'm taking that weekend off. It's on a Saturday and my sister and I are going to hang out and do what we always do on his birthday. We're going to watch old movies and have Chinese food and just hang out. Be sisters. 
I, we also may or may not get a tattoo. Um, she, that's, that's like on her side. She's working out, making, making an appointment and like seeing if we can get, um, a double appointment for that day. If not, it's not a big deal. I'm in no rush, but it would be kind of nice. <laughs> it would be kind of nice, but I'm in no rush, um, regardless. So I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll have a tattoo, but, um, June, Saturday, June 11th, there will be no podcast. Just FYI, I am not posting a podcast on that day. And, um, yeah, those are kind of my June plans, my June knitting plans. And, um, I do have some cross stitch plans. I have a lot of cross stitch plans. So we'll get to that towards the end of the video. Um, but I think that's all the knitting I have to show. So we're gonna, we're getting towards the end of the video, I guess, in the second half, in the cross stitch half. So I'm gonna like stand up and stretch my legs a little bit and, um, I'll try to make sure I have all my cross stitch stuff and then I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. So I got my last project that I realized I forgot. Um, we're just going to pull these in order that they're stacked next to me because I don't have enough time or the energy for order right now. Uh, so first I have my Crystal Mermaid Aquabella. Um, this is my mermaid, one of my mermaid projects this month for May. Uh, this is Be a Bella Filipina and I'm doing a skin conversion on her. And I'm stitching her on 28 count opalescent Lugana in the color Borealis, dyed by Miss Lay Pages. <laughs> uh, see, if you go shop at Miss Lay Pages, you can get things like this. <laughs> but, um... I got a little bit more done on her. I did uh, this and I got a little bit more. I got this done and like a little more Krynic stuff in. Um, not too, too much because this is a paper pattern and I had this out on my Lowry stand as my couch project. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't like working from a paper pattern when it's in my lap. I think I have to be sitting upright like at my desk in order to work from a paper pattern comfortably <laughs> because I was just uncomfortable and I did not want to like I couldn't work on this for long bursts of time and that's kind of upsetting because I love this pattern it's beautiful it's like it's an easy pattern to follow but it was just difficult when it was in my lap so I didn't like that so I'm gonna move this out I put a different project, a pattern keeper project, um, over my Lowry stand. It's Templar Prophecy from Long Dog Samplers. It's monochromatic. I'm stitching it with Sulky on 18 count Ada, so it'll be easy to see. It's easy to stitch. It's on pattern keeper. I can zoom in and out. I'll, I can mark off my stitches without a pen. It'll be wonderful. It's the perfect couch project to have. So next, my other mermaid project is Christine, the Arctic Ocean Mermaid. She is already dark skinned. Um, I know some, I know sometimes people when they see like a really pretty mermaid or a pretty lady uh, with dark skin, they assume uh, it's a skin conversion, but she is charted to look like this, which I really appreciate. Um, that's like the main reason why I bought this pattern. And I'm done with all of her skin. She's in a Q-snap. You can't really see, like, you can't see her. But I've decided that I wanted to work on the porpoises. Now, oh my god, why do I keep calling them porpoises? On the belugas uh, down here next to her, her little beluga friends. Um, because I knew that if I were to... There's, like clumps of cat hair. <laughs> I knew that if I were to go over and stitch all of her tail and then I have to go back to the belugas, I just wouldn't. I wouldn't stitch them. They'd never get done. So um, I kind of hopped, skipped, and jumped so I'd have something to count off of to start this beluga here. And I'm just working on them like basically page by page because I don't... I don't like following... Uh, with like a paper pattern, I don't like following 
the stitches across pages. It's, it's too much, too much work. I'll just stitch by page by page. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> um, this, I do have to cut the, the bottom of this fabric because this is a fat half of fabric. This is 32 count linen, 32 count Belfast linen, um, in the color Enchanted from To Die For Fabrics on Etsy. Uh, to Die For Fabrics, most of their fabrics are dyed to order. So you do have to wait a little while, but as you can see, they are well worth it. And I love this color. I am actually going to, so the reason why she's on a fat half is because um, if I put her on a fat quarter of 32 count, she would have been, she would have had really tight margin, like an inch or so of margin. And I like to have good margins on my pretty ladies because I put them on hand dyed fabric most of the time. And unless there's like a clear frame or border around them, I want to have, um, I want to show the fabric on the edges when I frame them. So I put on a fat half so I actually have enough. And because of that, where is it? I have like this strip of fabric on the side and then a bunch of fabric down at the bottom that I have to cut off. I have to measure and um, cut it off because I do have a new start planned for next month that's going to use the bottom half of this fabric. <laughs> so I am excited. She is gorgeous. She has been my focus piece for this month and she, I will try to focus on her until the end of the month. I do have to work technically tonight. It's again, it's late because this is the only time that it's ever quiet here in my apartment <laughs> because there are elephants that live above me. So it's late. Um, when does June officially start. I think like the middle of next week. So I have a little bit of time, but still, <laughs> still. I don't have all the time. So next, um, I have a full coverage piece. This is my supersized max color, a stitching shelf from Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, the artwork is by Amy Stewart. And this is stitched one over one full cross on 25 count Lugana. And as you can see, I am so close, so close to be done with this page. I literally have this much left. It's not gonna get done this month, but it is gonna get done <laughs> eventually. Hopefully by the end of next month, um, it'll be finished. And I'm happy. I'm happy with this. Um, I picked it up a little bit this past week, not too, too much, because I did have other new starts that I did this past week. Oh, excuse me. I did have other new starts this past week, but um, not so many that I couldn't stitch on this at least a little bit. <laughs> so... My yearly goal for this is 5% each year. Um, I'm at four point, almost 4.2% 4 complete on this so far. So I'm getting closer, getting closer. And those are all of the whips, the rolling whips that I have. Um, and I also have two new starts and two, technically two planned new starts. For next month but one of them is uh actually no I have to start this new start like tonight or Sunday <laughs> um because it's a mermaid and I have to start it for mermaid but anyways um I do have a new start that I have actually started this actually I'll do this one first because I started it first so this one um I found the sampler from bad vibes only on Etsy I originally saw it on Instagram, but <clears throat> um, for those of you that may not know, I am a, I'm a bedside nurse on a cardiopulmonary unit. 
and I saw this, this heart, God, you can't even see anything, <laughs> but I saw this heart sampler. I'll see if I can insert a picture, maybe, but I found this heart sampler on Bad Vibes Only on Etsy. You can see it a little better now. Um, and it's like all pinks and reds. And I originally wanted to stitch it on this fabric. This is a one of a kind 32 count linen dyed by Miss Light Pages. Um, and the margins on the, the longer sides, so it's like taller than it is wide. So on the tall, on the top and the bottom, the margins are going to be like one and a half inches, which I was like, uh, I don't know, like maybe I'll see if I can find something that's just a little bit bigger or like 40 count. Um, you know, I'll try to wait for her next fabric drop and see if she like drops this color in 40 count and just a higher count. Uh, but in like, you know, in the same size, just so I have a little bit extra margin to work with. But, but, um, I decided ultimately that I would stitch it on this because since it's a sampler, I can have tighter margins and just frame it right up along the edges. And it's a small enough cut of fabric that I could probably just frame it myself. So the margins don't really matter. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is how much I got. I think I got like a couple hundred stitches in. Uh, and I just outlined. Let's see. The left atrium. <laughs> I just outlined the left atrium. And I believe the aorta. I'm not too... Oh, I don't remember all the heart anatomy, but the left atrium is what I, uh, is what I've outlined and some of the coronary arteries up here. So, and then I got a little bit of like scattered stitches that you can't even see on camera. You can see them fine in person, but you can't see it on camera <laughs> very much, um, of like one of the pinks. So I started in the center. So I so that I knew that I had enough margin around the edges. And I think I'm going to try and outline all of the, do all the red in the anatomical heart, like in the heart motif, kind of in the center. And then I will like do the rest of the stitching in the middle. And if this is fully kitted up, um, there are five skeins. It calls for five skeins of this, of 304, uh, which is the darker red that I stitched uh, around the heart. And if you're not wrong, there is a lot of 304 <laughs> in this, but it looks really good. So these are all the colors. These are all the colors. There's only five colors, including the back stitch. And this is everything. So it looks gorgeous and the fabric is perfect and I love it. I just, oh, I can't wait to get back to this because it's so nice. And this is um, in Pattern Keeper as well. So it's easy to keep track of everything. And I just love it. I thought, I thought it was perfect and just super fitting and it's beautiful anyways. So it's amazing. Next, as I mentioned earlier, um, Jesse's 42nd birthday. My friend Jesse turned 42 yesterday. So I had planned a new start for her birthday. Um, her favorite color is rainbow because she is fantastic. That is an amazing favorite color to have. <laughs> so I decided that I would start the Twisted Rainbow Sampler by Northern Expressions Needlework. Uh, this is what it looks like all finished. I printed, I bought the PDF, but because they're specialty stitches, I printed off the entire thing. <laughs> so this is what it's going to look like. And this is what I've got, right? This is like flipped. Never mind. My, yeah. Yeah, my my fabric was upside down. Oopsies. Uh, but this is where I am at. I did all the cross stitches here up in this corner. 
And then I started the specialty stitch band with the upright rice stitch. Um, and I'm probably going to put it away here because I don't know. I, I really need to have that, get that new start done. <laughs> um, but I did all of this today or yesterday and it was, it was nice. It was nice. Um, I did get rid of the twisted, both twisted samplers in the cross stitch only versions. The twisted band sampler I destroyed and the twisted rainbow sampler I just got rid of. I cut off, um, what I had done and I kept the rest of the Ada because I really need black Ada for, uh, a few projects I want to do. And I'm just doing the special stitch versions and they're both for me. <laughs> I'm going to hang them up side by side. That is if, if I ever <laughs> finish them, if I finish anything ever, then I will hang them up side by side in my house. Eventually, maybe, perhaps, <laughs> but it looks so good. It's on 28 count black Jobelin. And so Jessie really loves Jobelin. I think it's her favorite even weave. Um, and I was a little skeptical, but I think I'm a jo Jobelin convert. <laughs> I love Jobelin, especially if I need an even weave and I'm just stitching with like cotton DMCs. I think I will prefer to use a Jobelin. Um, but if I am stitching anything with like silks or something that like a fancy lady <laughs> uh, or like hand dyed fabric, especially if I can, I'll probably just get linen because, you know, I like to. And I forgot, I have another new start. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee Cross Stitch. Uh, she is like one of the queens of tiny stitching. And she had a giveaway on her channel and on her Twitch where you could it wasn't really a giveaway. She was just like, I mean, it was a giveaway, but it's not that you won. She just sent it to you. So it was um, a giveaway to try tiny stitching. So I gave her my information and I told her I wanted 56 count even weave and this really beautiful green. Uh, I think it's Invisafil. Invisafil thread. I think it's a hundred weight sewing thread. Um, and I started this little project oh my god can you see look at my tiny stitches <laughs> look I'm trying to make sure I can like you can actually see this is nine stitches um I need to figure out like lighting so I can stitch it properly but I got the pattern I'm using is one that I brought I bought from Etsy from a seller I don't really recommend um but I have the pattern anyway so I'm just gonna stitch it it's nice and small it'll fit on this fabric and I'm doing this one over one on 56 count um, I have decided I don't really love 56 count. I think I would prefer to stitch. I think one over one on 40 is like going to be my sweet spot uh, with like a 50 weight thread. Like Silky makes 50 weight cotton. So I think I'm going to use 50 weight Silkies. Um, I have a long dog sampler planned. Uh, what? Jardin de Plaisir. I'm going to stitch one over one on 40 count Vertal using 50 weight sulkies and those are cotton <laughs> so they're a little easier to embroider with and I'm excited but I will finish that at some point I just have to like make sure I have really good lighting and I'm not too tired so I can actually see it but it'll get done and it's gonna look amazing so last but not least is what I'm going to my next new start and then another new start. Um, so my next new start is going to be uh, Siren of the Seas by Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm stitching this on another Jessie fabric, uh, which is this. It's also 32 count linen. Look how gorgeous that is. And this is like the color scheme of Siren of the Seas. So I'm excited. It's fully kitted up. I have all of my DMCs. I do need to put a needle minder on here still, but I have to start this in May because this is for Mermaid <laughs> as well. It's a little bit late, but it will get started. Um, I have all of the, all the, look at this color scheme. I have all the flosses 
it looks like it looks like um dark queen of the seas but smaller and she doesn't have a face but that's okay i think it's going to be a fun stitch lots of color blocking and um you know fewer colors <laughs> and it's already loaded up i've got you know she's ready she is ready I especially love this blue, blue screen of death. My favorite. What what color is it? This is seven ninety six blue screen of death, and then all these other like blues and purples. Super pretty. So that's my next new start that I'm probably gonna work on tonight, um, or like Sunday through the end of May. <laughs> And then my new start that I have planned for June, because June is Pride, as I mentioned, <laughs> my next new start that I have for June is going to go on the rest of this um, Heavenly fabric or Enchanted fabric from To Die For Fabrics uh, after I like cut off the, <laughs> the bottom, the extra. And I'm going to stitch, I'm going to use Ymir Silks, Almond M&M's Ymir Silks. Um... I think Kim Crafty Teacher DIYs did a did a conversion for this pattern. It is the Trans Pride Tapestry by D's 20 Stitches and Uncanny Kari. And I'm finally going to stitch it. I have not bought the pattern yet um, because I haven't gotten my silks in yet. I have ordered them, but they haven't been shipped. I think she, I think Ymir dyes them to order. It's, it appears. It seems like Ymir dyes them to order. And I... Nice sweet cat. <laughs> so I'm still waiting on those, but I mean, they should be here in June at some point and then I'll start it and then put it away for an undetermined amount of time like I do for everything else. And people wonder why I'm overwhelmed with all my whips. Hmm. But I really want to try and focus to finish some things. What? You're just like wandering and causing trouble, ma'am. So I'm going to put the cat away. So those are my plans. Um, life updates. Let's, her. uh, the last like month <laughs> I have been very, I've been like, contemplating my life choices I guess work has been god-awful I like the last I mean excluding this past weekend like the last four or five sh like weekends like rounds of three shifts in a row that I've had to work were just everyone was worse than the last um I work on a COVID unit and COVID is getting worse I think at least 25 out of 50 beds um, are filled at this point as I'm speaking and things are not good. It's just been busier and busier and worse and worse and no one wants to do their jobs. No one wants to listen to me. No one wants to be nice to the people that are taking care of them. Like... It's just every shift has been worse than the last. And then this past weekend, I finally had a week where I kind of remembered why I wanted to do this. So, I mean, I'm not going to quit. <laughs> so there's that. But um, it was it was really nice. It was refreshing and it kind of reopened my eyes and I remembered like oh yeah this is why I wanted to be a nurse this is why I actually like <laughs> what I chose to do for the rest of my life you know I'm not going to be a bedside nurse for the rest of my life but like this is why I actually like doing this and um I feel a lot better I feel refreshed I don't feel exhausted I don't, I'm not sitting here dreading 
having to go to work this weekend. I don't feel like upset. I don't feel sad. I don't feel tired. I don't feel hopeless. So things are starting to look up, I think. Although COVID is getting worse, so that may be short-lived. <laughs> but um, in other news, that's pretty much the only life update I have. I don't really do anything else. <laughs> Um, but in other news that I really wanted to talk about, I don't really talk too much about like current events or politics or news on my channel because, because I don't want to, um, is basically the short answer because I, I don't feel like it because this podcast is kind of my escape and Knitting and cross stitch are my, I feel happy when I do those things. And as like, as much as I may be stressed by like my self-imposed deadlines, it's my own stress that I'm in full control of. And it, it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Like it's just knitting. And that's what I love about it. It's just knitting. And I want this channel to be just knitting, but recently I don't think I can stay quiet anymore because on Tuesday, and pardon me if I'm looking down, I took extensive notes on what I wanted to say, but um, on Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, 19 children and two teachers, two adults, two adults, at least one of them was a teacher, were murdered at school on a school day when school was in session. Someone brought an assault rifle to an elementary school and murdered 21 people and it's I I found I found out on Wednesday morning and I just I don't have I don't know what to say I don't have words I'm trying to come up with the words <laughs> and I just, I don't understand. I, I don't fucking understand why this keeps happening because this is the only country where things like this regularly happen. There have been more mass shootings in this country this year than there are days in the year. And another school shooting happened less than two weeks after 10 black people were killed in a grocery store. And I don't understand. I don't understand. Because the people that run this country seem to love their guns more than they hate watching people, their people, the people that they are responsible for, the people that live in this country get murdered senselessly. And they're just fucking cowards how could you watch this happen over and over again and do nothing nothing is done nothing ever changes 10 years ago 10 years ago it'll be 10 years in december when the largest school shooting in history happened when all those children and those teachers at Sandy Hook Elementary School were murdered 
And I don't think it's radical. I don't think it's too much to ask for a child to go to school and feel safe, for a child to be able to go to school and not fear for their lives. And... I just, I don't know what else to say. I feel like every, I feel like it's, it's all been said. And anything else that I say is just going to sound like noise. Because nothing ever gets done. Nothing ever changes. And I just want to, I, I wanted to say something because I feel like I, usually don't say anything but I had to say something this time so I hope that those of you out there that that feel like things like this are just a consequence of living here I hope that it may I hope that these things make you think I hope that if you have children, you would know why this is unacceptable. If you don't have children, I don't have children. And I, this is unacceptable. So. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. But this is the end of this podcast. And I hate to end it on this kind of note, but I felt like something needed to be said. <laughs>